Hey, thanks for joining me. Hope you're doing well. Saturn is the so-called sixth planet in our solar system. This number six is incredibly significant when we look at the six-sided hexagon NASA shows us at Saturn's North Pole. This hexagon is, in fact, soft disclosure. You see, Saturn is not what we've been told. Saturn, like all of the other revolving luminaries, is a point of frequency expression, a sonoluminescent light above our flat plane that represents a larger concept than just a light. It's a light with principles that are embodied by the six-sided hexagon. The number six is not only the hexagon, but also the cube, having six sides. Together, these make up the hexagram, the prefix hex having to do with spellcasting, and the number six being the number of the material. Thus begins our description of how Saturn is being currently used, but more importantly, how it functions as a sort of computer for this material world. The figure of Father Time, is a derivative of Saturn, or Cronus, the Roman god of time. The Gnostic figurehead of the Demiurge, the being who took the essence of Sophia the Black Sun and bound it by space and time, is Saturn. This word we hear Satan is simply a later version of the word Saturn, so the common Christian assertion that it's Satan's world, simply means that we are ruled by Father Time, all of us, within the cube. But little do most Christians know that Yahweh is the Hebrew personification of Saturn. In essence, the three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all promote this Saturnian energy. The constructs of control all around us are ruled by Saturn. Government, media, education, and so on. Saturn is the planet of rules and limitation, and this makes sense since astrologically, Saturn is known as the planet of karma, but equally as the planet of death and destruction. From this perspective, Saturn doesn't make things easy. Energetically, Saturn commands us with discipline to get to work and to do so by carrying the principle of responsibility. Being Father Time, Saturn is at worst a dictator, but at best a wise teacher. Time is the ultimate form of slavery, but it is also a great teacher by slowing down manifestation. The elite worship Saturn as their Time Lord because Saturn restrains, and what the controllers of this world are looking for is free energy, our free electromagnetic energy which is able to be easily siphoned when we have restrained conditions. Let's get back to the North Pole's cube. This grid pattern of the cube is nothing to ignore. It represents the binary, robot-like consciousness of Saturn. Everything is about rigidity and discipline. Old Father Time, after all, demands he be paid. This cube is deeper than just a shape. We are currently in a fractal reality construct, that is essentially recreating itself in itself infinitely. This Earth construct holds Saturn as the orchestrator of this matrix, the computer, if you will. Let's briefly go back to what I've explained on the Black Sun. The Black Sun is the womb of creation on this flat plane. Sophia from the Gnostic tale. If Saturn is like the computer, then the Black Sun is like the cloud that's funneling the data throughout just like how Sophia is entangled within the Demiurge. Although we're expressions of Sophia, we're inside the cube, inside of Saturn's Yahweh fractal supercomputer. The cube, and especially the black cube, are seen scattered throughout the world, paying homage to this fact.
What we know as the Jesus fish actually has to do with Saturn. It has to do with the sine and cosine wave. It's these waves that create time. The Bible informs us that we are born into sin, but this truly means we are born into sign, into time, the sine wave of Saturn. In this context, sin has nothing to do with being evil. It has to do with being born within the type of limitation that allows one to ignore their divinity in favor of a more Saturnian or satanic energy. After all, they say sin keeps you from God. When one worships the time cube, one is hyper-focused on time and what can be accomplished within time. What we experience as contentment, bliss, love, these emotions pour in outside of time, whereas the emotions known as hate, anger, rage, depression, jealousy, these can only exist within the construct of time. This is fascinating because this means the Saturnian system around us has the prime function to try and keep us in Stockholm Syndrome and in low vibratory consciousness. The worship of time is worship of the energies these negative emotions produce. To strengthen the influence of Saturn with black magic and illusory systems means to circulate more archonic energy. So Saturn worship is prominent, but what does this mean? It means it keeps those who consent stuck in third dimensional awareness, keeping this plane in limitation. The essence of God is timeless, so to feel God, we must consistently be sending attention to our creative sovereign abilities without the backbone of duality. Saturn, or Satan, however, is extremely dualistic. With all of this limitation it brings, it also teaches patience, perseverance, honesty, and foresight. Saturn is to be respected, but not admired, for we can recall that Cronus ate his own son. Cronus being the Greek titan of the harvest, but the harvest being human souls bound by longevity. Like Saturn, the moon is not a physical object or location. It's an energy body existing underneath the flat earth dome. The moon has been depicted in various movies as a sort of control center or area of interception. This includes the lunar control room in The Truman Show, the Death Star in Star Wars, the DreamWorks logo, and so on. It's shown this way because the moon is a secondary energy system, a secondary matrix of control so to speak. The moon matrix is an inorganic womb, the moon a type of implanted surrogate, one that is luminous and gray. Gray is the color you get when mixing black and white, it's a dual pole system, and this connects to the Freemasonic checkerboard. The moon has the ability to do great things, but unfortunately it's been tampered with. The moon aids Saturn in building up hyperphysical conditions, which resemble a prison. It was placed here to regulate inorganic constructs on Earth. In past videos, I've talked about the two Oversouls that are operating freely in this realm right now. We have the Divine Oversoul and Archonic Oversoul. The Moon is the home base and portal through which Archonic entities travel into Earth, while the Sun can act as that for those connected to true Divine Intelligence. So the Sun is the actual spring of organic reality but the moon recycles this energy, acting as a type of succubus. The sun is an organic matrix, but the moon an inorganic matrix. The first day of the week is Monday, Moon Day. The first day of the weekend is Saturday, Saturn Day. And these days sandwich in Sunday, the Sunday. So we can see the connection between these three energy bodies hidden in our time system. The sun is being symbolically sandwiched in, misused. The frequency of the sun's energy is being redirected, minimized, covered up. Saturn and the moon attach themselves to and harmonize with those energies which sink into density. Interdimensionally, the moon is home to a light trap system, 
which generates a false light when one dies. This is tied in with Saturn being Cronus, the Grim Reaper, and Father Time. The Saturn Moon Matrix is a well-oiled machine. Saturn binds us in time and limitation, and the Moon reinforces these illusions and then responds to Father Time with her light trap. Magical, mystical, mysterious, the Moon has been associated with these attributes for millennia. It's a prominent emblem and symbol of spellcasting and witchcraft. The Moon is indeed alluring and magical, but is a harsh mistress. The transformative but dangerous powers of the moon are apparent when we look at the myths about the werewolf, a man who turns into a monster by the light of the full moon. And witches are often portrayed as a silhouette flying across a backlit full moon as a backdrop. The full moon is infamously known as a time when the so-called lunatics come out, seduced by the moon's light. There's no doubt that the moon with her alluring glow is so attractive, but Unfortunately, she is a succubus. If we can unplug from the worship of the material, which is our conic Saturnian worship, if we can unplug from the false light moon system back into the original divine intelligence of a human, we have a chance to change these paired energy bodies from oppressors to teachers. These energy bodies aren't bad, they're just working together in energetically abusive ways. Here's my proposal. If we can redirect the way we organize this reality to harmonize more with a wider spectrum of positive archetypes and traits, then we can uncharge the moon, and over time it will detach from Saturn's cord. We are inside the cube, tainted by false light energy, inside of Saturn's Yahweh fractal supercomputer. Will we ever get out, or will we keep living in ignorance? I ask these questions because together Saturn and the Moon aim to energetically bind. The false light Saturnian system is one that aims to have us forget our divinity, so we remain pretty much stuck incarnating on this earth realm. This isn't a literal stealing of souls, but rather a con to try and have us become so spiritually traumatized and controlled that we ourselves sever the connection. And that's easy to see when you look around. Many have lost themselves in the system, lost themselves within their computer. Right now, humanity has the wrong program opened up, and our malware protection has its guard down. If we can close down this program, we can reboot the Yahweh supercomputer, therefore changing what Saturn projects, uncharge the moon with our divine intent, and making it so Earth starts resembling more of a school rather than a prison. Thanks for watching, everyone. I love you all.